I, I come out here and just walk and sit and let let the trees talk to me. In fact, the the large one at the um, gallery, the trees, all those trees are from right around here. I will see something, an image or um, a design or whatever, and I'll just let it sit in my mind. And then when I go to work on it, it's like it has a life of its own. So I'll change it, I will alter it, I will delete, I will add. Would you then, would it be appropriate to call them almost like windows into this kind of imagined world? Well, that's a good way to put it, for sure. Yes, it's exactly what it is. It's just taking a moment in time and making it bigger than it is. Mm -hmm. Taking it beyond time and space, yeah. I mean, at this point you have a very consistent series, a very consistent body of work. What led you to this point? Many, many years ago, after many trips to the museum and studying art history, etc., I, I saw in my mind the work that I wanted to see in the museum, and I never saw it. Mm -hmm. I'm like, well, maybe I'll make it. <laughs> so I just, that, that was the vision I had in mm -hmm. my mind all along. It wasn't a decision, it was more like a path mm -hmm. that I had to walk on. Would you call your paintings, I know that they're monochromatic, but would you call them cool or warm or somewhere in between or no temperature at all? For me, color doesn't resonate with me. Color is its own, it's its own entity. It, colored works are, are more like statements to me. They don't resonate in a way a black and white work does. Black and white leaves a lot to the imagination, so you me especially and the viewer get more involved in it you get to focus more on it and by doing that you get more involved in the work and it takes you to a different place the other thing that really stands out about your pieces is that there aren't animals there aren't people there's not i mean well i say there aren't animals but sometimes there are birds that's correct and sometimes you have to look a little bit closer and you'll see other things but the point is not that I'm depicting the world. The point is that I'm depicting this imaginary place that comes through meditation, and that's a one-on-one -on -one conversation mm -hmm. with the world, with the work. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't involve distractions like animals or people. In some of your pieces, there is a very clear intervention that's happened though. So um, I'm thinking specifically of the one with the tree that's kind of bare on the bottom and then has all of the leaves on top and that one's very um, centrally placed and it's very purposeful the way that that was drawn and, and I know that there's a story to that one. The, um, the Arbavita. So that was a group of, of, of trees that um, were apparently gnawed on by the deer and it created this beautiful design. So there's a sense of time. There's a sense of time, there's a sense of the young and the old in one, there's a, there's a sense of decay with, for instance, the fence posts. And, you know, the fence posts and other kinds of objects like that are really indicative of the fact that there were people there. Mm -hmm. So that People leave their mark on the landscape, but mm -hmm. that wasn't the reason I chose to do that particular image. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that we are looking into the past, into the future, into what's happening right now? Is that window contemporary with us? I would say they were there in the now. And the now is always affected by the past mm -hmm. and perhaps by the future because when you look at the work, you're really transcending the moment of the subject. You're mm -hmm. moving into a time and space. So maybe you just you just indicated that they're past, present, and future, mm -hmm. all wrapped up in the now. The other part of that is using the graphite. Mm -hmm. The graphite pencils have a life of their own, and when I use them, it's like I have a dialogue between the pencil the paper, my mindfulness, and the image that I 
originally saw. It's all a dialogue. Mm -hmm. How it comes out, I never know. Mm. It's a mystery to me, too. I love, love the graphite pencils, mm -hmm. so that's what I'm, that's what speaks to me the most. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, I, and honestly, the way I use them, there are probably 12, 15 different grades of mm -hmm. graphite pencil, and I feel like I paint with them. I started meditating when I was quite young, and that meditation led into what I do now. So it was a, it was a relationship there as well. You know, drawing is the same as meditation, mm -hmm. except I'm doing something. Right. <laughs> <laughs> The art was also always part of your life, yes. and you, you have an artistic family as well, so there was a space for you to kind of explore this from a young age. Yes, very true. I started mm -hmm. creating when I was quite young. As I mentioned earlier, my father taught me how to draw. I still remember that. I was uh, sitting in the dining room in Boston, mm -hmm. and I think there was a hurricane outside, or my memory might be playing tricks on me, <laughs> but, but yes, and I'll never forget that moment. It was like an aha moment when he was teaching me what he was teaching me, yeah. Mm -hmm. It was very, very special. Mm -hmm. And from that moment, yes, I've always created, I've always designed, always, always been involved in art in mm -hmm. one way or another. Talk a little bit about when you go and you decide, right, to, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go draw. What does that moment look like? So every day, it's just a habit that I get into. I go my 60 steps in the studio and shut the world out mm -hmm. every day. I arrange my pencils, you know, mm -hmm. you know, I do that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But, and some days I have to sit a long time before anything happens, and some days I don't even finish my cup of tea, and I'm, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm, and I'm working away, mm -hmm. yeah. What would you say that this past few months and the works that you created in that time, um, you know, while we're thinking about the pandemic and everything that's going on in the world, would you think, do you think that those pieces are different in a substantial way from the pieces that you did before? Or was there something new that you developed through the course of working on them? I don't think there was anything new. I think it was just more of an evolution. But the pandemic is like always in the background. It's always a sadness in the background. Mm -hmm. In the studio, I can let that sadness go and mm -hmm. just focus on the work. It takes you out of the drama mm -hmm. of the day and reminds you of what's really real. Mm -hmm. This will pass, the pandemic will pass, hopefully quickly. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it reminds you every day to live in the moment. Are you seeing more of the natural world, these kind of imagined landscapes in the art that you experience, I guess, in, in the wild? at galleries and other places, or do you think that your work is fitting somewhere differently? I think everybody is unique, and the work that they do is unique, and it should be unique to mm -hmm. them. I have not, I don't compare myself to anybody, but I, I don't see anybody doing what I do, probably because what I do is really kind of very, detailed, time-consuming, and takes a lot of patience. Mm -hmm.